Political extremism took center stage in the nation's capital today. The committee investigating the January 6th insurrection focused on the role extremist groups played on that day. And one of the committee's main testimonies came from Jason Van Tatenhove. He's from Estes Park and is a former spokesman of the Oath Keepers. Van Tatenhove says the group went from a network of people worried about government overreach to a hateful extremist group that spewed and profited from conspiracy theories. He says his time. They may not like to call themselves a militia, but they are. They're a violent militia, and they are largely Stuart Rhodes. Um, they, uh, and I, I, I think, rather than try to use words, I think the, the best illustration for what the Oath Keepers are happened January 6th, when we saw that stacked military formation going up the stairs of our capital. And political extremism is on the rise in Colorado. So what is behind this rise in extremism? And is something something happening in Colorado to contribute to it? Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez spoke to experts today. And Megan, social media certainly has a role in this. Yeah, that's right, Shannon and uh, Shannon and Ann. Uh, social media has made it easier than ever for people with extreme ideas to connect with one another. And the pandemic drove people to social media. One expert I spoke with say says that extremism needs to be treated like a public health crisis. My time with the Oath Keepers began back at Bundy Ranch. It's rare to get an inside look at an extremist group. They're a violent militia. Rare to hear about what motivates them and how they gain their followers. The perpetration of violence, the swaying of, of people who may not know better through lies and rhetoric and propaganda that can get swept up in these moments. Um, and, and I'll admit I was swept up at one point as well too. Extremist groups took the spotlight on January 6th when they marched into the U.S. Capitol to try to stop the certification of the 2020 election. 14 Coloradans were arrested, though not all were connected to extremist groups. Three others were arrested recently in Idaho near a Pride event dressed in riot gear. It's gotten worse. The director of the Colorado Division of Homeland Security, Kevin Klein, says extremism is on the rise. And in Colorado, it has. There has been uh, an increase in uh, the searches that domestic violent extremists do. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, Colorado has 18 extremist groups, including big names like the Proud Boys. The white supremacist groups, the white nationalists, um, you know, we're definitely concerned about those. Hate crimes in Colorado are also up 54 percent from last year, much higher than the national average. Incidents of, you know, papering uh, where uh, white supremacist groups are putting anti-Semitic uh, stickers and placards up in uh, different public spaces. Psychologist Rachel Nielsen says the pandemic isolated people, but it also connected extremists. Now people can radicalize 100% online. And that's what we found is like, these are really normal needs that people have, and they're finding a horrible way to fill them. And these groups are getting clever at recruiting, using games, apps, and more. Mental health is another major factor, so the way she sees it. I would relate this to a public health issue, and we're really uh, on the national level and on the state level addressing this as a public health issue that this is tapping into the mental health issues. So Klein says it's important for people to consider their own role in perpetuating extreme views with what they share or they like or they retweet on social media. All of us play a role in this. Well, wow. all right, Megan Lopez, thank you very much for that. And the Anti-Defamation League tracks state crimes all over the country and breaks down the number per state reported. And over the past year, the ADL reported 204 total incidents here in Colorado. A vast majority of these were categorized as white supremacist or anti-Semitic.